far, far away, in the middle of the vast blue ocean, where rolling waves sweetly rose and fell, a distant island lay. An enchanted place of deep canyons, lush forests, and birds. Magnificent, graceful birds. Birds of all kinds. And to this glorious land, the scientist Jim Jacoby traveled. Even if I go back 50 times, all of it is really exciting. It's a pretty spectacular place to be, let me tell you. Each year, Jim journeyed to the island. He studied the birds, examined their ways, chronicled their songs. I, I could tell you stories about every single one of the birds. Some are rarer than others, and so that's why it, it's more exciting to find them. Hawaii was once known as a bird paradise. But year after year, Jim saw how this precious place was changing. Some birds flourished. That's the Eevee. The eevee is still extremely common, and eevee actually comes from the sound that you hear when it's calling. It sounds like sort of a rusty gate opening. <coughs> Others suffered deeply. That's the kamau. It's more of a solitary kind of a bird. Every once in a while, it will take off, shoot straight up above the tree canopy, and give this burst of song, and then come shooting right back down to its perch again. Yet the bird Jim wanted to see most of all was the fabled O'O. Birds spoken of in ancient tales, with sleek black bodies and leg feathers as yellow as the burning sun. The O'O is really a very spectacular bird. Uh, it's loud, sort of like a fluty, melodic song. But by the first blossoms of the spring of 1984, there was just a single O.O. remaining. From the start, Jim Jacoby knew this journey into the cloud forest was to be special. It was a beautiful day, as I recall. We started off from his camp, and it takes about an hour to go from where we were camped to down to the stream. We, 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 we stopped there and, uh, and, and started to listen. The birds were veiled within the thick, shadowy forest. So, tucked in his pocket, the scientist carried a tape recording machine to capture sounds and songs. It's approximately 11 to 11.30 a.m. on the 6th of August. We're on the Mohihi Trail. Then, deep in the Alakai's Valley, Jim heard the O-O, as clear as a bell. The hair on the back of my neck sort of stood up. He listened for a while, and then, to his amazement, it flew into view, settling on a nearby tree. This was his chance. It's really quite amazing. The OO -oh that we were seeing there at that time was the last one. So I turned on the, the tape recorder. Suddenly, the bird flew away. Had Jim recorded it? Had he captured the O.O. song? 
I rewound my tape just to see if I could hear it. And then... As I played it, immediately, within a few seconds, the bird came flying right back to where we were. You could see it sort of checking us out and looking and looking around and, you know, the head going back and forth. Two things hit my mind almost simultaneously. The first one was, wow, the playback brought the bird back into it. That's really exciting. Suddenly, the tragedy struck him. And then the second part that hit me like a strong punch to the head was the reason it came back was it heard something that it hadn't heard for, for a long time. On the tree before him sat the only living O.O. Wondrous and glistening, but all alone in the world. The mate it sought not to be found. And there it was. The last O.O. moved through the air and disappeared into the darkness of the forest. <laughs> 